Hello and welcome back to another full snap by step PC build guide and today I'm going to be showing you how to build a PC in the FSP CTB130B. Now if you didn't know FSP made cases, neither did I till they asked me to take a look at it, but what they have sent out is a micro ATX case. It's fairly compact, it comes with three ARGB fans included, so I'm really looking forward to putting a build together in it. In terms of the other parts, as you'd expect with an FSP case, they've sent out an absolutely kick-ass power supply to go along with it. And I'm going to be using their Hydro PTM Pro 1200W fully modular ATX 3.0 power supply. For the motherboard, I'm going to be using the Biostar B760M Silver. For the CPU, I'm going to be using Intel's 14th Gen i5, it's the 14500. Keeping our CPU cool, I've got an air cooler from Deepcool, it's the AG400. For RAM, I've got 32GB of Team Group's T-Force Delta RGB DDR5 at 6000 mega transfers per second. For storage, I'm going with a single Gen 4 NVMe drive from this build is from Samsung as their 990 Pro in 2TB capacity. And finally, for the graphics card, I'm going to be using the NVIDIA RTX 4070 Founders Edition. Okay, that's all the parts, let's get building. So as usual, I'm going to make a start by taking a detailed look at our case. So to remove our tempered glass panel, there's four thumb screws we need to loosen. And then with the thumb screws removed, our panel should be free, so we're simply going to be able to pull it out from the top and lift away. To remove our other side panel again, we've got two non-captive thumb screws at the back we're going to need to remove, and then we're going to be able to pull the panel backwards and lift away. We've got a mesh front panel with the FSP logo and it can simply be pulled off from the front. Take a look at the back of the panel we've just removed, you'll notice there is a separate dust filter in behind the mesh panel, although this dust filter doesn't seem to be removable. So with the front panel removed, you'll see FSP have installed two 120mm ARGB fans at the front of the case, although if you prefer, it is possible to mount up to a 240mm radiator at the front. Take a look at our case's front I.O. We've got a power and reset button, we've got two USB Type-A ports, a single Type-C port, and a separate headphone and microphone jack. On the top of the case, we've got a magnetically attached dust filter, which can simply be pulled away. So up top, you are going to be able to mount up to two 120mm fans, although radiators aren't supported at the top. On the bottom of the case, we've got a dust filter over our power supplies intake, although it is just simply a sheet of mesh that can simply be popped out for cleaning. And on the rear of the case, we've got another 120mm ARGB fan pre-installed. So the case is compatible with both micro ATX and mini ATX motherboards, and if you want to go with a CPR cutter, the maximum height supported is 165mm. And I think you probably are going to want to go with an air cutter in this case, although you can fit up to a 240mm radiator at the front. All the hot air that's going to be ringing in is going directly to your graphics card and because your power supply is going to sit down the bottom here there's going to be no other intake for your GPU so air cutting probably makes the most sense for this case. At the rear of the case we've got four horizontal PCI expansion slot brackets and as the case is quite compact the maximum length that you've got for your graphics card is up to 300 millimeters. Your power supply is going to go down at the bottom and the case is compatible with full-sized ATX power supplies up to a maximum length of 150 millimeters. So your power supply is going to be on display in the main body of the case. The idea is you're going to pass all your cables through this cutout at the back and then you're going to be able to route your power supply cables back in through the cutouts at the back of the case. We've got a hard drive cage down at the bottom of the case and this is where we're going to find our instruction manual. So in terms of drive support, in the hard drive cage itself you're going to be able to fit a 3.5 inch drive. On top of the hard drive cage it's either a 2.5 inch or a 3.5 inch drive and down below the hard drive cage you can mount a 2.5 inch drive and I'll show you that now when we remove the hard drive cage. To remove our hard drive cage, there's two screws at the bottom we're going to need to remove. And with the screws removed, we're going to be able to push the hard drive cage backwards and lift it up and away. So you can see the mounting holes we've got on the bottom for a two and a half inch drive. So it's simply got to set onto the bottom and then you're going to screw it in from underneath. Alternatively, if you don't want to use the hard drive cage, it looks like we've also got three and a half inch mounting holes on the bottom of the case. You are going to be able to mount a three and a half inch drive directly to the bottom of the case as well. So we slide a three and a half inch drive into the hard drive cage. You can see you're going to screw it in from the side and you've still got space under the hard drive cage for that two and a half inch drive which is going to be mounted at the bottom. And as we said on top of the hard drive cage you can either put another two and a half inch or three and a half inch drive. Moving into our rear compartment we've got our case accessory bag here. So you can see at the back of the case our case comes with a built-in fan and air GB hub and our pre-installed case fans are connected up to it. In terms of powering the hub, we've got a SATA connector on this end, and if we look at the hub, you'll notice our reset button is connected up to this port here, meaning that when we press the reset button on the top of the case, it's gonna cycle through the ARGB effects on the hub rather than having reset functionality. 
If you'd rather have reset functionality, all you need to do is plug this onto the reset port on your motherboard. Now, the only thing that I'm noticing is missing is normally coming from the hub, there's a cable that you can plug into a fan header in your motherboard to control the speed of the fans that have been plugged into the hub. So at the moment, there's no way for me to control the speed of the fans that are plugged into the hub. So what I'm probably gonna do is just plug these into the headers directly onto the motherboard, allowing me to control the speed of the fans. The other thing that I'm noticing is that all the RGB fans have an additional daisy chainable connector. So in terms of cable management, because I'm not gonna be using the fan hub in terms of powering the fans, it probably makes sense just to daisy chain these three connectors together, leaving me just one header to plug into an RGB header in the motherboard. That's gonna make the cable management a little bit easier because I'm not gonna to have to actually run a SATA cable to power the hub. We're just gonna be able to plug everything directly into the motherboard. So I'm just gonna remove the RGB cables from the hub. And then we can just daisy chain them together. So that's just gonna leave us one ARGB cable to connect up to an ARGB header on our motherboard. We can remove the three pin power cables which we're gonna be plugging them into our motherboard. And because we're not actually gonna be using the hub, the reset switch I'm gonna plug into our front panel connectors to give the case reset functionality. I'm just gonna remove the ARGB sync cable from the hub to improve cable management at the back. We're now ready to start working on our motherboard and we're gonna be installing our CPU, our CPU cooler, our M.2 SSD and our RAM before we put the motherboard into the case. So we can open the socket cover by pushing the lever down and out and bring it all the way to the top of the motherboard. And then we can open the socket cover up. We can then lower our CPU down into the socket, making sure to hold it by the edges and ensuring the text is the correct way up. And once we're happy it's sitting correctly in the socket, we can go ahead and close the socket cover down. If we apply a little bit of pressure here, the bit of plastic will pop off and we'll put that in the motherboard box for safekeeping. And then we can go ahead and close the socket cover to secure our CPU. To install our M.2 SSD, we're gonna to need to remove the heatsink. It's held on with two screws. And then we can lift the heatsink off. So there's no need to search the box for your M.2 SSD screw. Biostar have pre-installed it in the standoff. We can take our M.2 SSD and insert it into the socket. Then we go ahead and flatten it down and then we'll secure it with the screw. We just need to remove the plastic protection from the back of the heatsink and then we can go ahead and replace our heatsink. We're gonna be installing our RAM in the second and fourth slot along from the CPU. So we'll open the clips on these slots. Then we can line the RAM up with the slot. And once we're happy, everything's lined up. It's just some firm pressure and it's gonna clip into place. Same thing with our second stick. We're now ready to install the backplate for our CPU cooler because we've got an LGA 1700 socket. We're gonna to want to make sure these pins are all pulled to the outer setting on the backplate. Okay, and then the black plate should just line up with the holes in the back of the motherboard. Then we've got one of the little spacers with 1700 written on it to go over each corner. And then we can set our cutter mounting bracket on top. And then we've just got a screw to go into each corner to hold it in place. Next, we can add some thermal paste to the center of the CPU. There is thermal paste included with the cooler. We need to remove the plastic protection from our CPU cooler's cold plate. And then we can lower the cooler down, line it up with the bracket beneath. And then we're just gonna tighten the screw on each side of the cooler in turn. Our CPU fan header is this header at the top of the motherboard, so, so we can plug our PWM cable into it. We've got two RGB headers in the top right of the motherboard, so I'm gonna plug the RGB cable coming from our fan into one of them. And then I'm just gonna tuck all the excess cables in underneath our heat sink. So for our Micro ITX motherboard, we're gonna to need to add additional two standards over towards the front of the case. So the motherboard I'm using doesn't come with an integrated IO shield, so we're gonna to need to install it before inserting the motherboard into the case. So I'm just gonna line it up with the case and just push each of the corners in. And we just need to take care not to cut ourselves while doing this. There we go. We can then insert our motherboard into the case, lining it up with the standoffs at the back. And we're gonna secure it into place using the screws from the case accessory bag with a little lift around the outside. Next thing to do is get our case cables plugged in and our HD audio cable is gonna go into this header on the bottom left hand side of the motherboard. Do you think it would make sense to bring our cable through this hole here? The only issue is once our power supply is installed, this hole is gonna be blocked. So we're gonna to need to bring it through this cutout at the bottom. And then we can plug the cable in with the HD audio text facing up the way. Next to that, we've got three system fan headers. So I'm gonna bring the cables through and get them plugged into the headers. Our front panel connector is gonna to go to this header on the bottom right hand side of the motherboard. So we can bring them through the cutout. And as you'll see, there are a whole load of separate cables. 
So it is really important you pay attention to the diagram and the motherboard manual and make sure you plug them into the right pins as I'm showing you in the video. I am plugging the reset switch in here because I'm not using the RGB hub at the back. If you do want to use it, obviously just leave this out. This is our USB 3.0 headers. We'll bring our cable through, line it up with the header and push into place. And then just below we've got our front panel Type-C header. So we'll bring our cable through, line it up and push into place. And then we'll just pull all the excess cable through to the back. We've got another ARGB header at the top right hand side of the motherboard. So we can bring the cable through the cutout and get it plugged in. So we're now ready to install our power supply. I've gone ahead and plugged in the cables we're going to need. So I've plugged in a 12 volt type power cable to power our graphics card an 8-pin EPS cable to our additional power to our CPU and our 24-pin motherboard cable. So we're now ready to install our power supply and we're going to want to make sure we install it with the fan facing down the way where we can get cool air from underneath the case. So we can tilt it down, we're going to have to slide it under the metal bracket here and we might just need to lift some of these cables up and out of the way. We can then secure the power supply into place using four of the power supply screws from the case accessory bag. So one nice feature this power supply has is eco mode. So whenever the power supply is under low load, less than 30%, if eco mode is turned on, the fan doesn't spin up and this is gonna be useful in helping reduce noise in the build. So we're definitely gonna to wanna to turn this to on. Next, I'm gonna pass all our power supply cables through to the back of the case. Our eight pin EPS cable is gonna go into this header at the top left of the motherboard. So we can bring it through the cutout, line it up with the header and we'll get it plugged in. Then we can pull the excess cable through to the back. Our 24-pin cable is going to go into this header here, so we can go ahead and bring it through the cutout. We'll get it lined up with the header and push into place. And then we'll just pull all the excess cable through to the back. Just before we install our graphics card, I want to put a couple of cable ties and these cables running down to the bottom left of the motherboard. We're now ready to install our graphics card. I'm going to need to remove the first and second slot cover from the top, but to get access to it, we're going to need to remove this little plate. We can then open the clip in the top PCIe slot on the motherboard and then we can line our graphics card up with the slot. And then once we're happy everything's lined up, it's just some firm pressure to the graphics card. It's going to clip into place and we can secure it again with the two screws we removed earlier on. And we can then get our 12 volt high power cable plugged into our graphics card. And importantly, we want to make sure we get a nice click when we plug it in. Okay, last thing to do is some cable management. We've got plenty of cable ties in the case accessory box, and we've got some Velcro cable straps with our power supply, which might be useful for managing the cables in the main body of the case. So that's the PC set up. If you don't know how to install Windows, the driver, set up the RGB software, enter the BIOS, update the BIOS and adjust all your BIOS settings. I've covered that in another video and I'll put a link to that video in the description. But what I want to start off with now is taking a look at our temperatures. So I ran a 10 minute out of 64 stability test with all components in the system being stressed. Running all the stock settings, our BIOS our motherboard pushed our 14500 along nicely with all the P cores running at 4.6 gigahertz. There was absolutely no throttling during the stability test and our CPU reached a maximum of 92 degrees. In terms of our RTX 4070, it idled at 33 degrees and reached a maximum of 74 degrees. With all the fans running in the silent setting in the motherboard BIOS, our PC was whisper quiet and we had an average noise of 33 decibels at idle and 44 decibels under load. So in terms of building the PC, it was fairly straightforward. One of the major issues I think you get yourself into trouble with is really your cables. So you, there is a cutout down beneath the motherboard, but obviously once your power supply goes in, it's going to block that cutout off. So be careful you don't pass any of your case cables through it. 
The other place where things were quite tight were with the EPS cables at the top of the motherboard. So if I was building again, I would actually plug this into the motherboard before installing the motherboard in the case, and then you'd just be able to pass the cable through to the back. And the final thing to mention is cable management at the back was really tight. I struggled to get the panel on with the case sitting upright and actually had to put the case down flat to get the panel to go back on. So just be really careful with cables at the back and whatever you do, don't put any cable extensions in because you are going to struggle to close the back panel. So in terms of what I thought about the case, I do have mixed feelings on it. There's some things I liked and some things I didn't like. In general, I do think it's quite an attractive case. I like the mesh panel on the front, the ARGB effect from the fans. I think it looks well. It's good that it comes with three included ARGB fans. And it's also fairly compact, so it's going to take up minimal footprint on your desk. In terms of the things I didn't like, I think the biggest issue for me is the actual design of the case and having the power supply in the main body of the case on display. It's not actually the power supply that I mind, but it's all the cables being on display at the bottom that I don't like. Um, it is fair to say that with the temper glass panel on, you can't really see them, but I just prefer the design of a case with a power supply shroud where your power supply and all the cables are hidden out the way at the bottom. And you're going to have a much easier time in terms of your cable management as well in a case like that. Um, other than that, it really was just the non-captive thumb screws that I wasn't a big fan of as well. Um, so probably not a case for me given the case design, it just wouldn't be something that I would go with. But in general, working with it, I think I have come up with quite an attractive build. It's a fairly compact build and it doesn't take up a lot of room on your desk. So if you don't mind having the cables on display at the bottom, um, it may well be the case for you. I couldn't actually find this case on sale anywhere at all. I did do a reasonable search of the internet. Um, but I, what I will do is put a link to FSP's website where you can check it out. And if you do a bit of harder searching than what I did, maybe you will find it on sale somewhere. So hopefully you have enjoyed this video. If you have, please remember to give it a thumbs up. And if you're not currently subscribed to the channel, please hit the subscribe button as well. Thanks for watching.